More than just a book on how to paint, uh, in my opinion, Color and Light by James Gurney is the best book out there to learn how to see. Uh, I have touched on this on my uh, video on how to draw anything. Uh, learning to see uh, is the first thing, uh, and I think this book is amazing on that. Uh, I want to start with James' work. Uh, he has a channel here on YouTube, a great channel. He's always painting outside, trying to understand and translate different themes, different lights, different times of day. Uh, we can see here, like, nighttime. We can see a uh, painting of... Uh, flowers and 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 uh, vegetation uh, as well as like almost sunset uh like almost midday if we if we have the, like the project projection of the shadow here uh it's like almost midday uh snow uh with this cold uh and warm uh colors and and contrast so it's a very good book on uh everything that he is and he explores as an artist he has a lot of video tutorials as well uh, i'll put links to all of those uh, in the description but today uh, as i always uh, do we're going to focus on the contents uh, discuss a little bit the structure of the book and how can you study it and take a look at some of the examples of pages uh, that uh, he has uh, and that are super interesting for for us so let's dive uh, right in uh, so the, the structure uh, he has on the book basically starts uh, with a, a look to the past uh, tradition. Uh, so uh, academics, oh, uh, the plein air movements and how they started. Uh, so tube paint, uh, when it came and it started uh, appearing, it gave artists a lot of uh, uh, potential and, and freedom uh, to go outside and, and, and look directly and paint directly from from the, the real life. Uh, so he gives a broad view. In my opinion, uh, the way I, I would study that uh, is to focus on seeing the different movements and what they came up with based on other stuff uh, that we have in this book. So it's a back and forth kind of uh, way, like gathering a lot of references and 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 paintings from amazing artists from each of uh, those timelines and then coming back to them uh, to understand how they use color and light uh, and and what can we learn from uh, each one of them uh, on chapter two uh, James gives an overview of uh, different sources of light so that we can understand uh, what's the difference between like direct and overcast uh, window light without uh, like direct light, uh, candlelight and different uh, intensities of, of uh, natural firelight, indoor uh, electric and what that looks like in terms of colors uh, uh, for different types of lamps. We'll have different colors of light and we'll really differ the way uh, we interact with them and how we how to paint them. Uh, street, uh, street lights and, and, and night conditions, uh, as we saw in the painting from, from his uh, YouTube channel uh, previously. Uh, luminescence and bioluminescence would be uh, part of this uh, as well uh, and hidden light sources that we don't know where they where it's coming from it's not directly on on our uh on, on the picture plane uh where we're painting uh so it's very interesting to to take a look at, at all of them i think uh this will really translate with what I, just, what I just said of like going back to tradition and looking uh, at some of the images that you really like and understanding what kind of lighting conditions they were using. Uh, Sorolia, for, for example, uh, will we, we use a lot of direct light um, and uh, sunlight uh, open uh, spaces more than like candlelight. Uh, for candlelight, there is a, a great uh, movie uh, Barry Lyndon uh, by Stanley Kubrick, uh, great uh, uh, representation of candlelight. So uh, go check that out. Uh, and and after chapter two, uh, James jumps into uh, form uh, and, and and like interaction with light. So what does that look like uh, when we have a sphere or when we have a, a box uh, in 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 the the 
space and how that will interact uh, with the light. So the separation between light and shadow, uh, cast shadows, half shadows, occlusions, uh, in different directions of lighting uh, that will translate more into uh, telling a story. Uh, so like three quarter lighting, lighting from below, uh, like reflected light. Uh, all of those are super important to understand that different sources of light with different directions of light uh, will have different uh, storytelling purposes and, and uh, the way we react to, to those. Um, so this is basically the part of lighting uh, that will be super big. Uh, elements of color, then he starts diving into the color wheel. Uh, the difference like between uh, chroma, local color, uh, different types of grays, green problem, what that looks like in terms of painting as well as gradations in, in the painting and, and tinting. Uh, so it, it's a first look on what is color uh, and how we're going to handle with that uh, going forward. With that in mind, uh, he jumps into uh, paints and pigments because that's what he is using. We have on like Photoshop and, and, and all of that, we, we have uh, infinite amount of uh, colors, but when you're using paint, you have just a small uh, uh, range of colors that you can use. We're gonna be looking at uh, uh, some of the pages uh, after this. Uh, so it's, it's really important that you have that in mind. Uh, color relationships. Uh, so basically monochromatic uh, schemes, warm versus cool and contrast. Uh, we can see a lot of this in, in the works of uh, animation artists like Nathan Fox and, and, and all those guys. So I have a video on, on the Prince of Egypt. The Prince of Egypt has a lot of usage of uh, warm versus cool. Uh, so it's interesting to take a look there, a uh, great example. Uh, colored light uh, interaction, so if you have two different lights with different colors, what does that look like and how can we, uh, and, and color accents, how can we use contrast in color uh, to really guide uh, the, the eye. Um, and pre-mixing is mostly using those pigments to create uh, the palettes that you're going to be uh, using, like gamut masking, this is very uh, famous from James Gurney. Uh, we're gonna take a, a look at that uh, later on. Uh, visual perception, it, it's funny to have a, 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 a chapter on, on this because I think the whole book is, is about visual perception and in, enhancing your visual perception and understanding where to look at and, and what to value the most from what you're seeing. But anyways, like uh, he goes into some interesting uh, points like moonlight, uh, edges and depth, uh, depth uh, color positions, color constancy. Uh, this, is, this is really interesting. We'll, we'll see an example uh, later on, uh, but like uh, even uh, psychology of colors a, a little bit here. Um, so it's very, very interesting. Uh, with all of that, we start uh, interacting with materials. So uh, what we've seen so far is like tradition, how people handled color and light throughout history uh, and pigments and uh, two paints and all of, all of that. Sources of light, uh, different directions uh, and different uh, intensities. Uh, how to light, here is the, the part, biggest uh, direction part. Uh, what color looks like, paints and pigments and, and relationship between colors uh, and how can we uh, have a, a, a defined range. I think this is really important if you're using, for example, a Zorn palette that you have a, a small number of colors that you're going to be using and how to take the best out of it uh, and what those color contrast and, and combinations and relationships will create on our mind. Uh, that said, this end part is mostly on uh, what nature has and, and what's the relationship with different materials. So like subsurface scattering, uh, caustics, uh, specular reflection, uh, highlights, uh, and motion blur and, and all of that. The difference between photo and observation. There's a great video from his channel. I'll link in the description as well uh, on this topic. And then going bigger uh, from uh, more like local materials to bigger uh, 
vistas and landscapes. Uh, so like sky in different uh, 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 colors, uh, atmospheric perspective, like different lights of uh, times of day. So golden, golden hour, sunsets, fog, uh, and, and all uh, nature uh, effects that we're going to see. So dappled light, cloud shadows, a big one, uh, very interesting, uh, snow and ice and, and, and all of that. Uh, finally, the, the last uh, chapter uh, before like the resources and everything, uh, it's more about uh, how to interact with like this light changing show. There is one great image by uh, Nathan Fox as well on the topic. Uh, so like painting from your window in different conditions, light conditions, and, and what can you uh, learn from that as well. Really quickly, uh, a final recap, looking at the, the images uh, that we have. So tradition, uh, as I said before, uh, it's great to even if, uh, especially if you don't have a, a big uh, library, uh, mental uh, library of examples like Jerome uh, and a lot of different painters like uh, Muha and, and all, it's great to start learning some of those names and gathering some of the, the work from these people. Uh, different sources of light, so window light uh, without a, a direct light, but uh, lighting the whole uh, 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 space, uh, different temperatures uh, of, of colors like the street lights and all of that, and how uh, different directions of light interact with, uh, with uh, planes. Uh, light and form. So uh, I think this is one of the best examples that like, this value uh, is the same as this one. We can even do a quick uh, example here and, 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 and really drag this all the way. So it's, it's pretty close and it, it looks really different. Uh, so it, it's, it's really interesting to, to, to see that uh, working. Uh, different directions, so backlight uh, in this case, and always using uh, this uh, head as an example. Uh, this is a one a very important one of like reflection. Uh, so this under uh, planes uh, will be very uh, warm in color when you have like sunlight. Um, so it, it's really interesting to see, as well as the interaction with the light uh, from. Uh, this indirect light from the sky. Uh, color and value, as I said before, uh, like chroma and, 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 and uh, this is chroma and value. Uh, the, the elements of color, so basically understanding uh, and, and what like the green problem uh, makes and brings. Uh, paints and pigments, uh, as I said, all the pigments, we using Photoshop, digital painters and all, uh, we can use everything, but the pigments uh, will have different uh, points in the color wheel, and then we'll have to mix them to, to get to uh, those. Uh, color relationships, so more of a monochromatic uh, and colored light interactions, uh, pre-mixing uh, and having a, a defined range. Uh, it, this is a great example. I think those two are the best uh, examples in, in, in the book of how you can have a, a very uh, limited palette and still convey like all that you need to convey uh, and, and, and have beautiful paintings that are different from like only natural colors and, and, and closer to, to reality. Uh, it's, it, it is realist but still has uh, stylization on, on top of that. Uh, so visual perception, uh, this is the example I was talking about. So this is the same as, as we said before, uh, that this value here uh, or color and this color are, are the same. We can do the same as before. Uh, they are pretty close. Uh, and I discussed this as well in my video on how to draw anything. Uh, the link will be on the description. Uh, color psychology, as I said before. Uh, and, and last but not least, different materials, so subsurface scattering, highlights, uh, photos and observation, atmospheric uh, effects. So uh, this um, looks a lot like Bierstadt. Uh, this is a painting from James Gurney. So probably he was looking at a Bierstadt and, and learning how to use uh, atmospheric perspective from that person. So that's great as well to see. Uh, sunsets, as I said before, um, dappled light, uh, 
and finally serial painting so having a same the same place uh in in different times of day or this guy this is from uh, the w a window of a, a, a train it's not the the kind the the same uh different times of day but he has an example as well of painting different uh times that's that's pretty much it uh i hope you enjoyed uh the video this is a, a must-have book uh if you're learning to paint uh so really really important as well as some of uh his tutorials and watching his channel here uh, on youtube so I, I hope you enjoyed the video uh if you did you probably will enjoy my other uh book reviews i'll have one uh in the the screen uh, and i hope to see you in another video have a great day